at the conference a few days ago, there was a question after the second of my talks, and it was a question that was really more related to the content of the first of my talks, the one that talked about science, um, which it turned out that the question hadn't actually been present for. So, you know, I had some sympathy for the questioner. Um, however, um, there were a couple of things that the guy mentioned that were rather characteristic of what basic scientists often say when they're first confronted with the ideas that I put forward in this area. One thing he suggested was that it was very implausible that we would have in the foreseeable future a really, really dramatic postponement of age-related ill health because over the past decades or more, the rate of postponement of age-related ill health has been very gradual. And I pointed out that we can't make those extrapolations without looking at the details of what new technology is coming along in just the same way that, for example, in 1900, one could not have predicted by extrapolation how rapidly one could cross the Atlantic in 1930. In 1900, the extrapolation that would be possible would be on the basis of how rapidly ocean-going liners were becoming faster, which is, of course, only very gradually. Uh, but in fact, a few years later, we invented power of flight, and by 1930, people were flying across the Atlantic. So it was completely wrong to extrapolate. I believe that because of the burgeoning advent of regenerative medicine and the forthcoming applicability of regenerative medicine to the problem of ageing, we will be in exactly the same situation where a whole new paradigm of medical application, uh, medical um, advancement can be applied to the problem and therefore any rates of progress that we've seen in the past will be irrelevant. I believe that Predicting the future of technology can only be done by looking at the existing data that we have on emerging technologies, on the efforts that are being made to develop those technologies. We can make some generalizations by extrapolation. You know, Moore's law is obviously a very famous one. But in general, I believe that extrapolations that are very um, linear like that or exponential uh, in, a, in a reasonably accurate way are the exception rather than the rule, because very often, in well, certainly Moore's law is the case of this, they tend to be driven, they tend to be circular. The, the reason why Moore's law has been true for so long is largely because it has actually been advertised for so long and it has driven market expectations and therefore the rate of um, research that's done to speed computers up. I think it may be true in other areas as well. Whereas when new technologies come along that are completely disruptive and change the way that something is done, we absolutely can't use extrapolation. So I think the, re the best way to foresee what's going to happen in the future is to look at the very early stage proof of concept work that's going on that may in the near future lead to new technologies. Excellent. I think in relation to ageing, we can already see that a number of different areas of biomedical technology, and indeed even biotechnology beyond medicine, are going to converge and come together to form components of a panel of interventions which will need all of its components to be working reasonably well in order to deliver a significant result in terms of postponement of ill health. For example, one of the seven strands of the sense approach that I have been espousing for the past decade or more involves technology from environmental decontamination, finding microbi microbes and microbial genes that can break down unusually recalcitrant substances that accumulate in the body. This is something that works very well for the elimination of pollutants in the environment and the idea of applying it to a biomedical application, namely the elimination of things that accumulate during aging and cause diseases like cardiovascular disease and macular degeneration, is something that nobody's ever tried before, but it seems very hopeful. I like to call that molecular regenerative medicine, because it's restoring the molecular structure of the body to how it was at a younger age, it's just in the same way that conventional regenerative medicine, such as stem cell therapies, are restoring the cellular structure to how it was before some damage had occurred. And so I see the word regenerative medicine as being the sort of totem, the sort of moniker for exactly the convergence that is relevant here.